It's funny how up in arms a lot of sports fans are about the idea of Taylor Swift being at the Super Bowl. What's interesting is plenty of celebrities go to Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. There's, I mean, that uh, I, a bunch of rappers like Travis Scott was at the Michigan game when Michigan played their big game a few weeks ago. I mean, that's a totally normal thing for big celebrities to be at the Super Bowl. But if you follow any NFL accounts or meme pages or whatever, people are very upset about the idea of Taylor being there. You can take the pic down, <laughs> Kaylin. And 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 what and they they say that the cameras show her too much. I think the cameras show Taylor for a grand total of maybe 30 seconds out of the entire football game. And plus, it brings more attention to the sport. If you like the sport, then why wouldn't you want more fans to discover it? Why wouldn't you want more people to to encounter the sport? Here's my theory. I was trying to think, why do people get so much more upset about Taylor Swift being at a Super Bowl as opposed to any other celebrity. And I, I think it's they it's that they resent the godlike power that mm -hmm. she has. And she has a truly <laughs> yeah. godlike power over women. And and so I think it's like she just she just has way more social power than other celebrities. And it feels like a disturbance in the force. It feels <laughs> like she's not like a, a normal celebrity. And What's funny about that is that in order to have that kind of social power, that you can take over the Super Bowl, the the biggest event like ever in the galaxy, and have people all upset that your presence is actually taking over this massive event, you you have to be doing something really special. And that is, I think, worth looking at. I think that Taylor Swift is doing something that we can all learn from. And whether you love her or hate her, I, I think there is a certain magic that she is capturing that is actually very interesting. And that was so well articulated on this podcast I heard. It's the podcast called The Daily. I think it's from the New York Times or something. Anyway, this author, Taffy Brodesser Ackner, Aikner? I hope I'm pronouncing that. Sorry, Taffy. <laughs> Taffy Brodesser Ackner. Um, she was on The Daily talking about how, you know, she's a New York City career woman, not really typically the in the demographic of who would be the, the Taylor Swift, um, have the profile of being a Taylor Swift fan. Uh, I think a lot of people think of Taylor Swift fans as being young girls. They broke up with a boy. So now that's why they're into Taylor Swift. And that's why I, I like this woman, because I'm also not in the classic Taylor Swift fan demographic. And I think that this woman articulated something really interesting that, again, th this really isn't about Taylor Swift. It's about how all of us engage with the world around us. So Taylor, uh, Taylor, see this guys, I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing well. N now I am calling Caitlin Taylor just because she's hot I'll like Taylor it. Swift. <laughs> Does She's better than Taylor Swift. She volunteered to get tased. We're also both Sagittarius. So I'm practically Taylor Swift. Is that really? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. That's right. Cause you know, if, if Pluto was in Uranus <laughs> at the right time, I mean, that's going to impact things and it's going to, <laughs> I think that you're going to be dating a famous football player too soon. We're working on that. Well, we're we've, we're going to set up Caitlin with Aaron Rodgers, and because and she's a Sagittarius, so it will work. <laughs> okay, Caitlin, listen, guys. Okay, actually, full disclosure here. Hit the special sound effect for when I'm going to open up about something. That's this is my. I'm opening up sound effect for the first time in my over decade of experience as a broadcaster you know i had a daily two-hour talk show solo talk show talk radio on sirius xm and i've been podcasting forever um we actually just had to pause this episode because i'm doing that badly um if i hadn't just been in the er i would go to the er right now but instead i'm going to keep podcasting so if i'm <laughs> calling people by the wrong names and saying the wrong things it's just because i'm dying don't worry about it okay play this clip <laughs> no big deal for, yeah to play this clip from the daily clip one it was mm -hmm. those lyrics are so staggering to me in a way that when someone else is writing your songs for you it never quite goes there mm -hmm. because what leaves when someone else is writing music for you what leaves when you're trying to figure out how to make a hit 
is specificity. Right. Specificity is out the window because you want every song to be a number one. You want everyone to understand it. Right. And what she understands is that actually it's specificity that we've been missing from our songs. Man, that's good. Uh, and of course, it's on the on a fast speed. That's not what Taffy's voice actually <laughs> sounds like. But I am an impatient person. So that's a screen record of from when I listen to the podcast and I listen to everything on high speed. I actually I got annoyed that um, my meditation app won't let me put it on 2x <laughs> speed because I want it to be like, relax, close your eyes. Like, come on, get we got to get going. I need inner peace right now. I don't have time for this. Um, <laughs> So yes, that was on a high speed. Um, that is so interesting, what what this journalist points out there, that the reason that Taylor Swift has so much social power that it's it's like driving NFL fans insane is that with what she puts out into the world, in her case, it's it's her art, but this is true of any of us putting anything out into the world. It's It's very specific. It's very personal and and what this uh, reporter is is pointing out is that when a musical artist is just trying to make a hit just just trying to write something that will be really popular you don't bring specifics into it because that that will kind of alienate some group of people if you want a hit it should i mean frankly like 50 cents in the club one of the greatest <laughs> hits of all time I, I truly believe it is a masterpiece of humanity put it up there with mozart i love that song <laughs> but that is more of a classic hit and frankly like her song um taylor swift i mean she has what's the player's gonna play but shake it off yeah <laughs> um that's more like a classic it's just meant people are meant to dance and be silly to it um so these are speaking about general things just being rolling up to the club or um just you know people annoying you and you need to shake it off those are those are very very general things but then if you listen to her songs like illicit affairs mm -hmm. or exile it's like oh she wrote that about someone <laughs> real specific and and as as you see her get deeper in in her own career and catalog of work i mean she start she's naming streets like cornelia street uh she's like talking about um meeting you on the upper east side phone lights up in the back where are you at it, uh like a bar she describes the bar i'm like that's okay, so that wasn't <laughs> like, okay, uh, this is a very specific thing. And here's the thing. When you are trying to resonate with people on any level, whether you're starting a podcast and like, and maybe you aspire to be like me, you're like, you know, Jen gets nine views on every <laughs> YouTube video. And I'm and I'm trying to get to that level of success. But I kind of I just don't know where I would start to, you know, be that successful. Um, or it's just like, let's say you just kind of wish you had more friends you know you're trying to fit in a little more at maybe meet some moms at the park or at your kid's school or at, at the church or just any time you are trying to resonate with a wider group of people you're, you're trying to get more likes on your instagram anything you're trying to do the taylor swift lesson is make it personal and make it specific um you, you know let's say i i know someone who's um She's on Instagram and she's trying to be kind of a social media uh, consultant doing things like helping businesses get more traction or whatever. You can say generic things like, hey, start with this. Your hook needs to be this. But but I think when you start just being more personal and specific, here's my background. Here's my story. Yes, you will alienate some people. Absolutely. But the people who resonate with you will love you and that is a great start and and the way you apply that let's say you're not an artist you're not trying to grow your instagram but but you would just like to meet more people i think the translation there of of the the taylor swift lesson is maybe you just dress in a way that you honestly love and would be a little different to people you know may, maybe you put on like this outrageous uh, flamingo shirt because you just love it. You think that's really fun. And you think that flamingo shirts and plaid pants are the move. That is that is what everyone should be doing. You just absolutely love it. Well, there are going to be some people who are like, I definitely do not want to talk 
to that woman. You know, she's obviously crazy. She's like not my style. I've got my chic Chanel outfit on and I do not want to speak to her. But then there are going to be people like me who run up to you and say, we have to be friends immediately. This is incredible. Everything about your outfit is working. That's specificity. That is you bringing a a very specific side of your personality into the forefront for other people to see. It has worked for Taylor Swift and it can work for you. So I I think that, that, again, that um, interview was on the daily. And I just think that this woman in talking about what Taylor Swift is doing right has really nailed something that all of us can do right in every area of life. I I really encourage you to listen to that. So there's one more clip, another power clip. I actually screen recorded this just for my own personal use. And and then I thought, oh, my podcast friends need to hear this because this is incredible. Okay, so Caitlin, now that I know your name, um, (laughs) play the second clip. All great art is the art that sees you. And... I know this from doing a million celebrity profiles, and I know this from my understanding of fandom, that if you if you show somebody that they are real, you have them for life. She has me for life. Oh, isn't that incredible? Mm-hmm. Play it again. That Honestly, that is so moving to me. I, I, I want to make sure you guys hear that because this applies to all of us. It's so good. I, I find that clip deeply moving did you find it moving Kate? oh yeah yes she she's obliged yes. to say yes but she did, <laughs> no, <but I> did. <laughs> she did she's like i it's it's almost as good as getting tasered it's like <laughs> incredible okay play it again all great art is the art that sees you and i know this from doing a million celebrity profiles and i know this from my understanding of fandom that if you if you show somebody that they are real you have them for life Oh. She has me for life. Oh, if you show somebody that they are real, you have them for life. And so what does she mean by that? Let's unpack that. I, I think showing somebody that they are real, I think what the, the way I would interpret that is you open up about something, about some side of you that not, everyone has the the side of you that thinks that wearing plaid pants and a flamingo shirt is incredible or for some of you i'm always telling you to go wear a bright red lipstick so maybe you do that and it feels a little outrageous and then you strike up a conversation with someone else who would thinks that that's a great lipstick or whatever or or maybe you are creating content maybe you're a songwriter you're trying to grow your instagram whatever when you show the world some side of yourself that might not be accepted by everyone and you turn it into art. And and I don't mean art like something you hang in a museum or even necessarily something you put on an album. But to me, art is just taking something in the human experience and packaging it so that it resonates with people. That's a great definition of art. Oh, is yeah, it not absolutely. hit the Jen spinning hot fire <laughs> sound effect even as she's dying? <laughs> we had that. We had our best men create that special sound effect. Um, man, if this is my last podcast episode because I can't going get an with appointment <laughs> with my hematologist, we're going out with a bang. This one's hot fire. It's just I'm just spitting hot fire left and right. Um that's what I think all art is, whether it's music, uh, art you hang on a wall, stand-up comedy, whatever, uh, dancing. I-, I think it is taking something powerful from the human experience, a-, a story or a moment or an emotion, and packaging it in a way that other people can internalize that emotion also. And that's how you can create art out of your experience. It Again, even in like you're showing up to the PTA meeting and you just wear that crazy outfit that you like. That's creating art. To me, that is art, actually. And what you do in those moments is you show other people that they are real. And, that, and, and it doesn't work for everyone. Like Taylor Swift, honestly, it, for as many fans as she has, she has as many haters. That, I think that's actually another 
kind of, that's sort of the elephant in the room of all this is that a lot of people hate her. Again, look at all the NFL meme accounts. They hate her. So you won't show everyone that they're real. But when you are authentic and you turn that authenticity into art in some way or another through what you wear, through what you say, through your podcast, your social media, the songs you write, the paintings you paint, you will find your people and you will show them that they are real. If you walk up in that crazy outfit to the mandatory parent information session at my kid's school and I see you, you have made me feel real because I would look at you in that crazy outfit and I would think, okay, maybe I don't own a flamingo shirt and, and plaid pants, but I have that in me to want to be that daring, to want to be that different, to want to not care what anyone at this meeting thinks about my fashion choices. And you have validated for me that I'm not the only one. And in that moment, we've created our own little village here. That's what Taylor stop? Swift is. What? I said, do you ever stop with the good content? I see. And I did. The, yes. And I didn't even pay Caitlin to say that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, see, this is God is with me because I'm probably going to die because my hematologist won't let me get an appointment. I feel terrible. So it's like, might as well make this one count. If episode 193 is the last one, might as well make it count. Um, I mean, essentially it is. You're kind of creating a village there when, when you're your authentic self and you show, you show people that they are real. There's this moment of like, wow, we're the same. And you make other people think, wow, I'm not alone. And there's a price to that. The price you pay for that is judgment from other people. So you, you don't get to have the experience of creating that village and showing other people that they are real without the cost of removing yourself from someone else's village. Because there there might be a judgy mom there who wants everyone to be more cookie cutter and just due to her own issues is she just judges people who are a little different. And so, yeah, she will sit there and she will whisper to her friend, like, look at that. Oh, my gosh. Like, let's make sure that we don't invite her to the bake sale. You know, I mean, that that's going to happen. The price for creating your own village is being rejected from someone else's village but it's always worth it to be your authentic self and then attract the people who just really love that authentic side of you